Oh, wow. Near Joshua Tree. Wow. San Diego. Welcome. Germantown, Maryland. We got two Atlantas in here. Houston, Texas. Well, welcome, everybody. At any point, if you have... Um, items that you'd like to um, submit for our discussion. We will have an opportunity for discussion. You can just put them up on our Jamboard uh, link that I am providing to you right now. And uh, it just takes you to a Jamboard that looks like this. And it's three things. We know Jamboard's going to go away, but it's just where you have an opportunity up at the top. Um, and of course, my shared screen. Let's do this. That might help. Um, you can go ahead and put in there in our Jamboard uh, if you have what's working, any suggestions or questions that you want to have at any time during this meeting, uh, and this just helps us to house in, um, it's kind of like our parking lot uh, for any items that are on your mind. Of course, this is always an interactive meeting. Feel free, as we've done, where are you from, to add it into uh, into the chat. Um, we're glad to answer questions as we go throughout our meeting. Um, this meeting is really for you as our members to get information and the latest updates from experts um, and our Aquatic Council chairs on different topics. But help to help us get started with our meeting, we always kick it to our wellness um, committee. Um, and we're going to take a mindful moment right now to settle us in um, into our meeting to get us present at this moment. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Thaddeus Gamery. Thank you, Dr. Lynch. And good evening. Good day, everyone. I believe we're all in the U.S. <laughs> um, a wellness practice just grounds us into this moment and connects us to this group. For this purpose. And being on Zoom, sometimes if we add a little movement, and we can do a very little movement. So if you can all put your hands into the universal prayer sign, prayer hands are a signal of peace, compassion, and connection. And I invite you, as we breathe in, to spread your fingers out, breathe in, exemplifying spring and growth. And as you exhale, bring your hands down and let your heels of your hands come apart. And you breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Continue breathing in this fashion and realize that we are connecting over thousands of miles of way with our breath, with our movement. And we're actually activating the vagus nerve. which is the rest and digest part of our autonomic nervous system. Providing an opportunity to feel grounded in the present, connected to ourselves, connected to our group, connected to possibility. And on this last one, I'm going to ask you to breathe in deep and hold it open, accepting possibility. And let it all out. And thank you for letting me share that little playful, uh, mindful moment with movement 
on a Zoom space for this Diversity and Aquatics all members meeting. Thank you, Dr. Lynch. And thank you, Thaddeus. I was doing it in the background and just feels so good. We're all connected now even further. But one of the things part of uh, diversity and aquatics, in addition to our mindful moment, we always like to discover where we are sitting in our land acknowledgments. Um, and I thought it'd be important to start with our present and then now to acknowledge uh, where we all are standing at this very moment. Um, if you've never done this before, and I know a couple of you might already know what native land or indigenous land that you're on, uh, there's this great website that I'd love to share with you. Um, and if you already know where you are, you want to put it into the chat, you can go ahead and put that in the chat. But if you go to this website, native slash land dot ca, you can see where and what land that you are presently on. And it's important at this moment, we want to give acknowledgement to that, right? The acknowledge of the land that we are on that is of tribal communities, um, because we are on this borrowed land at this borrowed time. Um, so I'll put it into the chat, this website, as a great resource um, for you as you go. And, and let's go ahead, if you, if you already know which one you're on, uh, go ahead and uh, put it into the chat. And let's just see where... We are, so we can give our land acknowledgement to where we are today. Oh, wow. Thank you, Marianne, for sharing that. Thank you, Nikki. Wow. Quite a few that you were sitting on. I love that. Um, so for those that don't know me, my name is Miriam Lynch, and I serve as the director, um, executive director for Diversity and Aquatics, and I'm located outside of Washington, D.C., and so this is the native land uh, that I'm sharing on my screen of where I'm located, um, and so I give fellow salute to, I see a couple of our friends from Bowie, Maryland, you guys aren't far from me, um, and more. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Autumn, for sharing. Hadaway, beautiful. All right. So thank you all for sharing this moment. Hopefully you'll take this practice um, and research further into uh, the traditional land of tribal communities in which you are sitting today. So here we are in our March membership meeting. Uh, there is quite a few things that have been happening behind the scenes for us in diversity and aquatics. Our agenda today, we had a chance to go through a welcome. Um, we're gonna give some updates uh, and we'll have an opportunity for some discussion. Again, I'll put into um, our parking lot, uh, a place that you can park your questions or share discussions with one another um, through our Jamboard parking lot. Um, always you can use our chat system, which allows us to uh, get any questions as we go throughout our meeting and more. Um, just to let you guys know a little bit about us as an organization, those who are new into this space, we always welcome new members, is that for us, Diversity and Aquatics, we are a nonprofit organization. We're 100% volunteer at this moment. Um, and we have an, a vision that we want to empower, we want to promote, and we want to support um, water safety, as well as the opportunities in aquatics, especially for our underrepresented and historically marginalized communities. That's what our focus. And a lot of what you're going to hear today are from folks that are leading efforts towards 
um, creating sustainable aquatic opportunities in differing ways. And so we're so excited to share each of those with you and each of you here. Um, our board sends greetings to you. These are the amazing humans that I get to, a chance to work with um, on a frequent basis. Um, I'm proud to announce today we just onboarded a new board member. Uh, we have John Abdu is joining us um, as a part of our board. Uh, so that's the only face you do not see on there. But just want to give big kudos to each of our board members for all the work that they are doing behind the scenes to making these programs happen. So big thank you to each of them. An addition of who you will hear from today is our aquatic council leaders. Our aquatic councils are instrumental in taking national efforts and creating them on the grassroots level. And um, thank you, Nikki, I'll make sure to update that. Uh, our aquatic councils do incredible work um, day in and day out on uh, different topics and programs as well. And you'll get a chance to hear from them today um, and what they're doing in their different aquatic areas. Today, what we're gonna talk about um, for our updates are these items here. And I'm gonna ask um, our friends from the American Red Cross to kick us off in our first major update. We are so excited for this that's about to happen. Uh, today, we are joined by Connie Harvey and Stephanie Daramont, who are going to talk about our academy program that we have going on. And I'll kick us off here and then I'm going to pass it over to Stephanie quickly because I, in the last 24 hours, got a terrible head cold. And so talking is challenging. So um, I'm excited to introduce you all to Stephanie Daramont. Uh, she might be new to many of you. She is familiar to some but she is now on our team with our Aquatic Centennial Campaign, and uh, she brings a lot of uh, great information and great experience as a, an aquatics provider herself, but also in different roles in the Red Cross. And um, she's got some good stuff to talk to you about some of the IT academies that are coming up. So, Stephanie. Thanks, Connie. Um, hi, everyone. I am so excited to be here with you today um, and to talk to you just a little bit about our Academy program. Um, so in the chat while I'm talking, let me know, are you Red Cross certified? Are you an instructor? Are you already an instructor trainer? Are you looking to be an instructor trainer, either maybe in WSI? or in lifeguarding, or maybe even first aid CPR, AD. Maybe maybe you don't wanna do the pool thing anymore, but maybe you wanna do first aid. So um, I would love to hear from you. If you're interested in that, I'm happy to reach out afterwards as well. Really quickly, we do have two designated um, academies coming up that we would love to fill. So if you are interested in those, um, I am gonna do a really quick, if it's okay, Miriam, I'm gonna share my screen, if you're cool with that, or do you, you want me to wait till later? Okay, I'm good. Okay, so there's two academies coming up that um, I want you to be aware of, both in Maryland, um, that really need some more people. So if you're interested and you have the ability to travel, we would love for you to go there. But what I want to do is just spend a couple minutes talking about the application process. Sometimes it feels buried and it's hard to find. So I'm just going to show you a couple different slides. Yeah, Ernie's like, yeah, it's buried. So those of you who are instructors, um, you will travel over to RCLC. So I'm gonna see, uh, there's the share screen. I don't use Zoom often, so uh, we're gonna try this. Okay, there's like 5,000 things open too. Hang on, let's see. Okay, can you see my, well, let's see. I'm gonna go to presentation mode. All right, so how to find the Academy information and application. This is gonna be super quick, super easy. The first thing you do is you log into RCLC. So up in the top, you make sure that you're logged in and you see your little profile there. The next thing you'll do is you'll travel over to Instructor's Corner in the center, or Instructor's Corner, Instructor Lifecycle. Oh, that's a throwback. Um, and then you'll tr uh, click on Instructor Trainer Candidate. So one thing I want to note, if you're looking at your profile and you don't see this Instructor Portal or Partner Portal listing, you will not have access to this. So you may have duplicate profiles. So that is the uh, 
you may you may or may not see that. If you do not see that, then we need to get to the bottom of it and, and figure out what's going on with your profile. So we'll click on instructor trainer candidates. And then there's gonna be a number of things that pop up under instructor trainer candidates. The things that I want you to be most familiar with are at the top for good reason. There are instructor trainer responsibilities, becoming an instructor trainer, there's an FAQ document, and there's going to be two items that'll come in really handy, especially if you're going for WSIT. So it's an employment verification letter of recommendation. Um, there are alternate qualifications for WSIT. So if you're running um, a Learn to Swim program, maybe you haven't taught a whole bunch in recent years or you recently renewed and got your WSI, that would be the, the way to go for you. So you will need these two documents. There's tips for teaching at the academy. Um, and then there's the academy schedule, which is really important. This is an old slide, so you see that's in 21, but it is updated as of March 4th, so about a month ago. And the LGIT Academy has changed just a little bit with our new R24 curriculum. Um, it is down to three days now. So WSIT Academy is a five-day class. LGIT Academy is a three-day class. And if you were interested in that CPR, first aid, AED, Instructor Trainer Academy, that's a two-day class. So our schedule is posted and then there are different applications. So you will just follow the application. This one you'll see the heading is lifeguarding instructor trainer candidate. You'll have qualification requirements, a checklist, and then the application. And it is an online application where you upload your certifications. They will go in and look at your profile and they will see your teaching history. Um, and so, yeah, it's super easy. Once you get there, you just got to know where to go. Um, when you do your instructor trainer application for WSIT, you will need those additional items like the application check or the application, the um, recommendation letter and potentially that employment verification um, if you're going to do alternate qualifications. And that's it. So it's super easy. I'm going to share one more thing just really quick. <clears throat> and that is the application checklist. So like I said, WSIT application, there's a standard qualification and an alternate. This gives you all, and I know you probably can't see this on your screen, but this gives you all the different things that you need. Um, and then you just determine, okay, I can go the standard qualification route or the alternate qualifications. We do have this. It's more simplified for lifeguarding. Um, and there's some and or options down here. So really look through these. Um, if you ever need help with it, please reach out. Um, my email is stephanie.daramont at redcross.org. I'll throw it in the chat as well. I'm happy to help you navigate through this if you need it. And then like I said, oops, there is the new, brand new. You can find out which um, academy list this is based on the date up here. So this is the newest one that they have and it shows all the different places you can go. Once you're approved, um, you will get in a letter saying that you've been approved. It'll be notated on your account. That application is good for one year. So you have one year to sign up for the IT Academy if you're choosing. Please let us know so we can make sure to connect you through Diversity and Aquatics for your enrollment. And then um, we will make sure to get you connected so that you can get enrolled through the Training Support Center after it's all notated on your account properly. I think that's it. And happy to answer any questions as well. Absolutely. And we just want to say a huge thank you. This has uh, been a process. And we also want to give a huge thank you to Bowie State. So I know I see Ernie and Mark on here. Uh, they are our first HBCU folks to have an academy program approved at their facility. So let's like, that's a huge thing. And I know it's been a lot of paperwork that they had to fill out and do, but um, this is significant um, for us as a program to be able to provide this for our community. And I think we were on the phone the other day and that academy program is filling up quick, y'all. So um, if you are interested, we want you to make sure to get us your contact information. I see already some people are getting Stephanie's information so she can get you right away what you need to do and answer any questions that you have so that you can get into those two programs. Okay. 
And we also want to say a big, huge thank you to our American Red Cross partners for making this happen. Um, as a part of our partnerships, they have been helping us with, especially our HBCUs, one, working with Bowie State to make sure they get all everything um, processed, and also with those who are wishing to get their certifications. And it's not just our academy certifications. I have to let you know, this goes deep, what our partnership is with them, is that they're helping um, us, our HBCUs and those who are affiliated HBCUs get their lifeguard certs, uh, get their WSI certs, and now we're adding in this academy program. And the point of this is to create sustainable aquatic programming in our communities. And so this is a huge thing, and we want to just say thank you to each of you, and thank you to Bowie State for making this happen. Well, thank you. Thank you all. We'll have them on um, the call. If you don't have a question right now, uh, they'll be a part of our call. And then we'll also have an opportunity for breakout sessions. So if you want to ask more personalized questions um, to the both of them, uh, please feel free uh, to do that once we have our breakouts as we go throughout. All right, I'm going to reshare my screen because we've got some more amazing things that are happening as a part of diversity and aquatics. So thank you, Stephanie, for that amazing presentation um, and information. I do want to let you know we have a couple of other events uh, as a part of not only we have the academy programs coming up. Um, one of our, our partner at with through Kathleen Dean, Wade in the Water, she is going to be at Boston, I'm sorry, not Boston. I'm, she's going to be in the Upper Northeast. She's going to be in Rhode Island at Brown University um, on April 6th and to uh, display her weight in the water. I don't know, Kathleen, are you on the call today to share more? Yes, hi, Miriam. I'm on the call. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so um, Wade in the Water um, was selected to screen at the Rhode Island Black film festival so um i'll be going up there next weekend to show it and it will screen at brown university um they've done a great job promoting it and will be a q a following the film screening so um that's the, the long and short of um you know as we continue to you know utilize this film for outreach and engagement we're stretching into New England once again. It actually premiered in uh, New England. Nice. Nice. This, that is amazing. So please, if you are in um, or around Brown University, please make sure to go give some support and see it. You can't see it online anywhere. You have to see it in person. So make sure, take advantage of these opportunities. Kathleen has been traveling all over the country um, and showcasing the film Wade in the Water. Uh, she was in Jacksonville, uh, what was it, last month, right, Kathleen? Um, yes. And had a chance to share it there. And our members in Jacksonville, big shout out to them, came out in full support. Um, and uh, this and we're able to see it as well as support and also amplify the work that we're doing as a part of diversity and aquatics. Thank you. And after Rhode Island, I guess our next official screening will be um, international in Grenada. Oh, you giving away our secrets already. Yay. Oh, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love, no, you're fine. You're fine. Um, no, yeah. And we're really excited to share with you guys that opportunity that's happening in Grenada. Um, so to get to Grenada, we got to do a couple of other events and updates for you guys. Um, I want to talk to you guys about the ripple effect. And the ripple effect is coming on April out in LA. Uh, I know we are a very East Coast busy as we hear. We're going to be in Brown University April 6th. Um, but we have a chance to connect with our West Coast folks out in LA on April 20th. Just to let you know, the California Water Safety Summit is the week right before. So if you're going to that, just stay a couple extra days, come Saturday and come join us. Um, we have two big events um, that are happening as part of the Ripple Effect. And um, there's different ways that you can get involved with the Ripple Effect. Uh, one, you can participate. And there's two ways to participate within the Ripple Effect. Um, you can also, if you're out on the West Coast and you want to display your organization, what you're doing, or if you have a product, you can be a vendor. 
And then always, if you are interested in helping and supporting our mission and what we're doing, you can also join us as a sponsor. Um, and it's great brand recognition as well as the money that you are donating and putting forth in the sponsorship helps us to do more water safety Um more water safety education, as well as continue to do um, help and amplify opportunities in aquatics, like help support people getting to the academy programs, helping support uh, creating uh, different pathways uh, for uh, resources to be available and more. And so we love for you to be able to sponsor and be a part of it. Um, here are the times and what we're doing. I don't know if Dr. Beal, if she's available right now um, to be able to talk about the symposium, but I do see my board chairperson, Dr. Jackson. It's so good to see you on here. Um, if you wanna take a two minutes to talk about the symposium that's happening for the ripple effect. Thank you, Dr. Lynch, how are you? Glad everybody could make it at this time, but um, the symposium is something new. We're trying to bring any of the academic research involved with aquatics to uh, the forefront, basically, give an opportunity for some exposure. So whatever you may have, uh, if you'd like to do a poster, 20 minute presentation, PowerPoints, uh, we'd encourage it all. We're gonna have round tables, lecture, hall, seating. Um, there's a myriad of activity with aquatics that research wise people have done. And sometimes you don't get an opportunity to share that information. Uh, we certainly are having it prior to the Ripple Effect event, so it's all in one day. Um, so hopefully, if you're interested, uh, you can certainly email Miriam or myself. She can forward it to me. I can answer your questions privately um, uh, if you'd like that or if you have any uh, interest at all, want some direction on how to go about doing it. If you have no idea, we're there to help. So uh, there you go. Please reach out to me. Um, Send a note, an email to uh, the DIA email, and they'll forward it to me. Is that good, Dr. Lynch? <laughs> Thank you so much. I was so excited to see the uh, American Red Cross uh, IT um, camps or, or, or clinics you're going to put on. Um, you know, I hate to, I don't know when I became old, but, you know, be, being a former uh, WSIT, lifeguard training IT, first aid, CPR IT, uh, decades ago, um, you know, it's great to see that we're still moving forward. That's the win-win. And um, I'm excited that we're getting these opportunities for the, I call it the next generation. All right. Well, that's it. I'm not going to take any more time. Well, thank you, Dr. Jackson. Um, and so, as he said, there's information on how to register for it. It is also up on our website. Uh, for you to be able to register if you go diversity and aquatics backslash events. And Adrian, if you don't mind putting that into our chat for us um, and to get involved with, um, with that, either as a part of the symposium, uh, you have an opportunity, as Dr. Jackson said, you can present. If you have an amazing program that you want to share, you can present. We need all presentations submitted by April 4th. We already have a lineup of amazing presentations. Again, our friends at the American Red Cross are going to join us, and they are going to showcase the brand new curriculum for Whale's Tales, as well as the lifeguard um, certifications. And so that will be a part of presentations. Uh, we also have a couple of other ones that will come uh, throughout. I know Dr. Quash is presenting um, and she is a published author. She is well known in this space and her research. And so she'll be a part of it as well um, in LA. So we're really excited for how the lineup is coming. Um, not only can you present and be a part of that, uh, that group presenting, but you can also participate. Um, if you want to hear, want to mind meld, do you want to be a part of the roundtables, uh, you could be a part of that. And then and stay a while and be right there on the beach with us with our ripple effect. Um, we are fundraising for the programs, uh, significant programs uh, that we are doing um, all across the country. Okay. Our next one that I want to talk about is International Water Safety Day. International Water Safety Day is coming up May 15th, and there's ways that you can get involved. Everybody here can get involved with International Water Safety Day. Uh, you don't have to. We're going to show you right now. There are tier one things that you can do uh, just by sharing your um, 
your social media and bringing awareness to water safety. That's the whole point of it, right? International water safety is a day to raise awareness around water safety. And last year, uh, Connie was with us in Chicago. They did a round table of schools impacting almost, what was it, Connie? 300,000 kids on that day. Huge. And then this year, guess what? We've got nine cities signed up, y'all. It's so exciting. And there's ways for you to get involved with that. So um, I'm going to share with you a couple of ways that you can get involved with International Water Safety Day um, and why it's so important for us to do it. Because we know the biggest barrier for water safety is getting the information on how to be water safe, right? A lot of times um, it's just, I did not know. We hear that story too much. I did not know that I needed to do this. And so with Water Safety Day, like we said, each of us, as aquatic professionals and being on this call, have an opportunity to amplify that to our communities and talk about water safety. And so what I want to see, I want to see that hashtag being used on all your social media um, connections, being able to show it, um, share, share your water safety rules, right? Like talk about your program and water safety. Let's do it all together on May 15th and make a huge impact um, in our communities, because what is so important to us, we need to realize it's not just in the pool or around the water that we are aquatic professionals and that we're in this space to talk about water safety. It's everywhere. It's where you are going to your city council meeting. Talk about water safety on water safety day during that week with your city council. Um, it's going into schools and uh, being able to read a book and talk about water safety in schools. We have a number of different resources for curriculum as well for you. And so uh, let's talk about it. There are different ways you can celebrate International Water Safety Day. You can do dry land-based water safety. You don't need a pool. Go to a school, go to a youth group, go to um, talk about it through your social media, dry land-based. You can do a water-based event. Um, which many of our places are doing. I know here in D.C., um, we're being joined by a number of groups here in D.C., and big shout out to Howard University, who's going to host a water safety festival on May 18th, um, and it's going to be hands-on in the water, along with a couple other cities that are doing stuff. Like I know Candace and Houston is doing an in-water-based water safety event. Um, or you can do something hybrid, which is kind of both, right, um, in this event. And so when we're talking about it, I just want to run through some ideas with you um, on how to do that. First, advocacy. You can do number one is advocacy. You can showcase um, this group out here in Philadelphia. I don't know why that circle's there. I, I apologize. Um, but they put pools in the street <laughs> right outside to advocate for water safety. And then they shared that on their social. Um, being able to have a webinar with your um, parents association, your PTAs, your SGAs. I know at our school, um, our buddies club, I, for those that don't know, I work as an admin in a public school here outside of DC. Our SGA and our buddies club got together and they did a couple of promos on water safety last year and they did it through social media. So that was so cool. And absolutely, share in the chat. If, if you guys want to get together, this is that chance right here. I love that. Um, and we do have a hashtag. It's hashtag IWSD that we're going to be using on that day. For those that want to know more, our first Fridays that's coming up this Friday on Friday, April, I want to say, um, April 5th we are going to do a webinar with the International Water Safety Foundation, uh, the executive director, Janelle McClay, as well as um, board member Nolan Rawlings, Dr. Nolan Rawlings, to talk more and further about how you can get involved with water safety. Um, if you're part of a health and wellness fair, you can do that. And then you can see <laughs> Dr. Beal's done quite a lot. She was also did a presentation in school. So that's dry land base, right? You can do that dry land base. And if you guys are near each other, I know we've got a couple of people, Atlanta and more. Hey, use the chat and get together and be like, hey, can we do something together? This is what this is for. Um, and then, of course, you can do water-based activities. So this one, uh, our group in Florida did an outdoor a beach meditation for water safety. They've done that. Um, they've done events, uh, rowing um, council did an event on international water safety. And then, of course, you can do things in the pool. Um, as well. Okay. Here's where we're going to be this year um, in all these different areas. 
big shout out. Uh, Thaddeus is going to be in Grenada. He's going to be on the in working with schools and uh, doing that. We'll be in Los Angeles, Houston, Texas, Jacksonville, Indianapolis, Chicago, uh, Boston, and Arlington. And big uh, kudos to also our partners at USA Swimming. Um, who has also joined us. So not only American Red Cross, but USA Swimming in amplifying International Water Safety Day on May 15th or shortly after with some events, okay? I love the chat. I love this chat. That's amazing. You guys are getting together, to get some good stuff. All right. So if you have any questions about that, I'll be happy to answer that about what International Water Safety Day, but I'm actually gonna turn it over because... Mr. Thaddeus Gamry has some big announcements about Grenada and our wellness retreat and water safety festival. And I think Bev is also on here to talk about it as well. And I oh. think you're on mute. You okay, go. I'm sorry. Can I share my screen? Oh yes, I think I can. Okay, so let's see if I can do this. Uh huh. Nope, that's the wrong one. Let me uh, stop sharing that. And we'll try it again. So bear with me here for a moment, folks. But I will. Uh... There it is. Okay, can everyone see that? Yes, okay, so I'm gonna put it, ah, oh, there you go. So now, um, we have a fantastic event that was uh, originally the brainchild of Beverly Isagohi uh, from Atlanta uh, when she went to Grenada last year and had a phenomenal experience for herself and decided she wanted to share it with other people. And through her advocacy, we were able to partner and expand this experience. So um, it's more than just a water safety experience. It's a mindfulness and water wellness retreat for adults as well as for children. And if you haven't seen or know about Grenada, it is a swimmer's paradise. And I had the good fortune of, and we have had the good fortune of, of partnering with Beverly in Atlanta to do the Water Safety on Our Mind Water Safety Festival. And that is part of what uh, led to the expansion of what we're doing in Grenada. And with her advocacy and her ability to connect with communities and partner and create partnerships, she has uh, brought a whole bunch of folks to the table. And because water is such an essential part of life and now we are absolutely more conscious of water as uh, in the uh, water ecology space, a natural resource and also for the, its potential for healing. Um, we're partnering with Grenada in a way around water safety that includes this expanded definition of water for wellness and healing and, uh, and, and climate advocacy. And I'll, I'll stop there. Beverly, is there anything you want to add at this moment before I continue? Well, I, I may have pointed out in one of our previous meetings that the waters in Grenada, for me, it was something, it was otherworldly. It was just that much of a special experience. Yes, it's the temperature of the water. Yes, the clarity. But I think what added to the experience of swimming there was the people. They are on the beach. You know, Grenadians are on the beach. Uh, and for me, it was a little bit different. You know, I've, I've traveled to, to different areas, different regions of the world. And typically we don't see locals spending 
as much time on the beach as you do in Grenada. So it just gives you an idea of, of how welcoming those waters are. And I would encourage anyone that um, has an interest in swimming open water to go at least once. And I promise you, if you go once, you will go back again. Yes, and some of these images you're looking at are from Grenada, but we're also including the experiences that we bring and the ways and the approaches that we bring to this aquatic space of blue mindfulness. And of, and so of course, learning to swim is a, at the foundation of becoming safe and comfortable and increases safety, comfort in the water. And it's available at any age at any age and what offers a collection of other benefits. And this is something that's been known historically, but not as well practiced. And would you believe it or not, even on an island like Grenada, their swimming uh, ability is not as, as high as it could be. And then in their own words, they have people that work the, the boats, they have a sailing and a boating uh, industry there. And there's some of them don't know how to swim. And I'm not talking the cruise lines, I'm talking about the small boats. Many of them don't know how to swim. A, a matter of fact, the preponderance don't know how to swim. So um, as Dr. Lynch said, we're gonna be celebrating International Water Safety Day in partnership with a collection of local Grenadian uh, um, aquatic organizations. Uh, one is Straight Kicks Swim Club and Get Grenada Swimming on International Water Safety Day, and also during our Water Safety Festival on June 8th. There will also be a screening of the Emmy Award winning film, Wade in the Water. And these images that you see are of the Grenadians themselves teaching swimming. 95% of the lessons are taught at beaches. Yes. And the water's calm and warm. That's right. right. That's right. There's also another initiative we partnered with, and this is due to uh, Beverly's amazing uh, connection and advocacy in this space and skill to being able to partner with this amazing uh, program that's going on. That's a Grenada based global initiative on a, around climate change and environmental advocacy. 195 countries in 365 days. They will tour the world by boat, by plane, by bus. And convoy, and convoy. And convoy to talk about the water. And this is um, a picture of Johan and his daughter as they're both certified scuba divers. And they love, they absolutely love the water. And they, it was his daughter that actually initiated and, and she's 18 years old, swim swimmer, swim team, and now a scuba diver. And she's the one that was behind creating this opportunity. Um, yeah. it's a youth, this is a youth-led initiative, an incredible opportunity for young people. And they're putting together an amazing team of adults to support the youths that are going to. And they will partner with local uh, governments and programs wherever they visit as they visit the world by boat by plane and by convoy they're going to have um, um uh electric powered uh, buses to 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 convoy and so update or apply for your passports because if you go to grenada you have to have a passport and we'll stay tuned for more details on the schedule and the itinerary and this is uh some images of um, straight kicks swimming club in Grenada. And some of these swimmers are just competed in, in Doha. I think it was either Doha at the world. And so these are elite class swimmers, but the whole island of Grenada does not have a 50 meter, the nation does not have a 50 meter pool, a 50 meter competition pool. They don't have one. And that was one of the other things that they're interested in bringing. Uh, to the, and this is their 50th anniversary of independence this year. So they're really excited and celebrating and happy to have this partnership. So uh, I'll, I'll turn this over to you, Beverly, about the actual retreat side of this. Well, before I uh, talk specifically about the retreat, I just want to add that this is a moment in time for the island of Grenada. Um, the unfortunate 
reality is that there is damage to the aquatic infrastructure. Uh, and so there is a need to have expertise. There's a need to build careers that can address the problems that they are having environmentally. Uh, and so we, we're encouraging as many folk in our aquatic community to go, share your knowledge, encourage young folks to think about careers in aquatics. Uh, part of the education that will be provided, for example, when Thaddeus is going to the schools, he'll talk about uh, some career options that maybe these young people never considered. So just really, you know, hopefully uh, many of you will be able to go and share your enthusiasm and encourage because it, it, it serves another purpose here. As, as many of you probably know, uh, the islands for the most part, they rely on service industry um, apart from, they have some manufacturing, uh, you know, they have the spices that they produce, but they heavily rely on the tourism industry. Uh, so building out the aquatic side, I think would be a wonderful uh, way to diversify their economy. Now to the retreat. Uh, one of the, the primary reason uh, I looked at that island as a great destination for our swimmers to get open water swim time in was because they have so many options. When you talk about beaches, whatever beach you go to in Grenada, the water is just, it's almost calling your name to get in. It, it's just that fantastic. And I thought, my swimmers who are novice, who are not comfortable getting in open water, for example, here in Metro Atlanta, sometimes I really have to beg and plead to get my folk to get into lake water. They don't like it. It's murky. Um, and so I know for them, going to an island where you have clear water uh, and you've got, again, the temperature is perfect, they're, they're more likely to get in and swim. Uh, so that was the inspiration initially for doing this. Uh, and along the way, we realized that we don't want to just do for ourselves. We don't want to do for our people only. We want to share. And the way we do that is by uh, helping uh, uh, the community of swimmers in Grenada build out program programming they have and would like to expand. We have uh, one partner who told us about her program and actually she has programs in the schools and she was saying they're, they're, uh, they've are they got, I think 80 schools that is. I believe Natalie said they have about 80 schools that they're, they're presenting to. Uh, and this is over the, yeah. over the maybe two or three years that they've built out these programs because they're so determined to create a larger uh, field of swimmers, they want to see some of their folk make it to the Olympics. So they're highly motivated. Uh, and so this was another another motivation for us to pursue uh, bringing a group to the island to swim and show how much we um, are enjoying the element. And uh, we just want to build on what we've been able to do so far. You know, here in Atlanta, we have for the past few years, we've been doing programming on uh, uh, International Water Sa Safety Day. Uh, and this year we really wanted to, to emphasize international part. And so going to Grenada will do just that. Uh, and we're hoping that we can spread this enthusiasm that we have from our folk uh, to other communities, wherever they are in the world. Uh, because when you look at the numbers, the reality is our folk in the diaspora our drowning numbers are higher. And how do we how do we change that? As Miriam has said earlier, you know, it's, it's about empowering. And we believe, you know, the first step is creating a culture of love for the water, uh, whether it's through the family experience, through uh, the schools, we're trying to bring people into our world. We want this ecosystem um, where brown and black, black folk are, are highly um, uh, motivated and excited and eager to get in the element. So that's the reason for the retreat. Come on down. 
Well, thank you. Thank you. And um, we're going to share how you can sign up for all these events, um, including this one and updated information um, from them. Thaddeus, any and Beverly, any last um, words for our group? Well, you know, if you do make a decision to go, keep in mind, you need a passport. Uh, and you also want to go ahead and contact the agent because it right now is people are are planning their summer travel and so you could find uh, that it will be a lot more challenging to get uh, accommodation if you wait much longer so I encourage you to contact the um agent there is the contact information on one of the slides that is I think you have the agent's name and number mm -hmm. Christian, yeah, Christian it? Coacher, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, I encourage you to go ahead and make the call and and get your get your your, your travel plans set so you can join us in June. I just want to add um, that the they are hosting an event, Caribbean Sustainable Tourism, uh, People, Planet, Prosperity, Purpose Partnership. So as Beverly mentioned, they're really motivated to create uh, um, uh, sustainable economic uh, tourism and, and also connected to their natural environment. And that's it from us. Thank you, thank you. Um, actually, I'm gonna keep you on Thaddeus because uh, we are also announcing uh, a new position within Diversity and Aquatics. If you want to become um, further involved in the part of leadership with the diversity in aquatics. Uh, for those that don't know, Thaddeus is our director of community engagement and partnerships. But that work, as you can see, has expanded. It's 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 so much. Not one person can just do it. Um, and so we're offering this opportunity to our membership for people to get further involved and work with like Thaddeus in this partnership um, atmosphere. And so um, Thaddeus, if you want to go further into what um, the regional directors for community engagement now looks like. I'm trying to share, but I think I'm oversharing. Okay, there we go. I think, okay, can you see that? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I don't take care, uh, credit for this beautiful slide deck. Uh, had the help of uh, Dr. Lynch and also the technical expertise of Anesti Vega, the school building council chair to create this slide deck about the regional director of community engagement. Um, and it's evolving and it's uh, definitely a, a, a growth moment. And the regional director will just give you a little bit of the context as we continue to expand as an organization, we want to ensure our support scales with our growing reach and impact. Historically, the work of community engagement and collaborations was directed by one person or by the executive director and some of the board members. And now we're going to focus it more to regionally and they will be in a position to further the mission of DIN meetings and the, and, and the unique needs of their communities. The overreaching goals are to develop exceptional grasp of the landscape of aquatic activities in your region build relationships with people and groups that align with the mission of diversity in aquatics, create and create and communicate pathways to resources, training, funding, networking, et cetera, amongst regional partners and communities. Implementation, with the support of the National Director of Community Engagement and Aquatic Council, and it should also say the executive director, some responsibility will include plan and coordinate events such as a water safety day festivals and tretathons, serve as an ambassador of diversity and aquatics at conferences and other networking events, facilitate workshops and training on safety, aquatic leadership, development, nonprofit management, grant writing, et cetera, support local initiatives and with fiscal sponsorships and grant implementation, And here's the, the tenets of regions that we're looking at. Regional directors of community engagement. And as you can see, Florida and the Caribbean. And this also will be impacted uh, by the actual applicants 
who will be uh, applying exactly what configuration of their region will look like. So uh, that's it and uh, stand by. Uh, the application process will be opening up uh, and uh, thank you for letting me share that. Yeah, so this this position is uh, allows us to expand more, but even further support our aquatic councils, and we'll be working with our uh, aquatic councils on um, getting more localized efforts. So, for instance, uh, it's already starting to happen. Right, is that uh, you know there are opportunities that are available maybe that are in New York. So the region director could connect to, uh, and there's a need for scuba or there's a need for adaptive aquatics. Uh, those will work together as part of our organization um, to providing resources and much more um, on a regional level, okay? So um, thank you Thaddeus for sharing that uh, with our group for today. So again, if you're interested in it, uh, I always our big contact if you didn't get the information from uh, Thaddeus's slides, you can always uh, email us at info at diversityandaquatics.org and we'll help direct that information uh, to the right person to get that information to you. My last bit before you'll hear from our aquatic councils is that uh, we are doing a water safety festival. Uh, we're looking for volunteers, not only for what we're doing regionally for International Water Safety Day. This is an amazing opportunity, folks, is that we are going to be a part of Olympic trials in Indianapolis, June 15th and 16th. Yes, yes, right? Oh, I love the, I love the faces. Everybody's like, what? So um, we're looking for volunteers. And with that, as a part of our volunteer, you get free tickets to the opening day of Olympic trials. Free tickets. These things are like a hundred and some bucks, y'all in a seat. And so we're looking for volunteers. We are asking that you do provide your own travel um, and lodging. But at that, we'll on the 15th be working with the community in Indianapolis to doing a water safety festival on June 15th. Um, and 16th, and then the participants will be coming with us to Olympic trials to see the opening day of Olympic trials. So we're really excited about this happening this year. This is in partnership with our friends at the at USA Swimming um, to making this happen. So uh, if you're interested in it, uh, I'll show you really quick. We have launched our membership site, y'all. And so if you go to our diversity and aquatics um, website. It is up and running. I know you guys have been wondering about our membership site and it being up and running. So each of these updates that you've heard from, aside from the academy programs, because the academy program, you have to go through, Stephanie showed you how to log into that. But all of these events that we've just talked about are now on our membership site. And so our membership site is where you uh, registered for this right here, but you can also get to know and register for other events um, that we talked about just now. We'll be starting to use this more often. Um, as you can see, the all membership meeting, the ripple effect, the Grenada swim is up there and the water safety festival are all up on our membership site. Get up on the membership site. It is $25, but you have access to a number of resources that are being provided and poured into our membership site and more. Um, so please, please, please go ahead and get in there um, and get started. So we're really excited that this has launched um, uh, and it's housing all of these events where you can find out more information and even sign up for each of the events as well. Okay. I'm going to turn it over uh, for our last half of today for updates from our aquatic councils, where you can hear from them on some updates happening in their area. And then we'll open it up for the last half of today for you to connect in breakout rooms with each of our groups um, and ask more questions. But first up is our adapted aquatic council. Hello, everybody. Good evening. I am Adrian, and I am the co-chair for the Adapted Aquatics Council. Um, myself and Dr. Monica Lapore. Uh, this year, we have um, 
well, we started last year implementing roundtables, which is for organizations that are around globally, United States, who are in diversity and aquatic, I mean, that are in, sorry, adapted aquatics, or um, interested in adapted aquatics, has an opportunity to come meet once a month. We've chosen the last Tuesday of each month at 1 p.m., um, that information will get posted as we, um, each month. So like we just decided our last meeting we had was just on this Tuesday. Uh, we're working on um, best practices of implementing an adapted program. Um, it is coming from research done. Um, I think Dr. Uh, Nolan and Dr. Lepore, and if I'm not mistaken, I don't want to misspeak, but I think Dr. Beal has something to do with um, the research they have with the water safety, and we're looking at modifications as it relates to adapted aquatics and um, how to implement that in the, uh, the regular adapted aquatic program. Uh, so if you have any interest in adapted aquatics, we are looking for as many voices and advocacy um, as we can have. We are also opening up our council to council members and our, our I guess, mini council board uh, to join us as we are uh, just expanding more and just, you know, wanting to be able to reach more people. So we're asking to get, you know, some fresh faces on the board. Um, so if you're interested, just reach out to me and I will put um, the Adapted Aquatics email in, in a moment. And um, that's what we have thus far. Thank you so much. Um, we were just on a meeting last week, uh, this week, and doing amazing things. So thank you both for that. Um, is Dion Dean on HBCU, HSI, and Tribal Council? Hey, how are you guys doing? So um, we've been doing a couple of things with Dr. Nolan Rollins. We're looking forward to um, our second trip and probably like the last four months or so, but we'll be taking a trip um, starting down in Nashville, going through uh, Lemoyne Owing College in Memphis, and then um, we're going to be finishing in New Orleans, um, stopping at about four to five HBCUs on that route um, to uh, work with the Red Cross, as well as um, to let them know about um, the HBCU grant to uh, kind of help influence um, aquatic programming at their schools and let them know about the opportunities in those areas. Amazing. And so if you're around those areas, uh, please connect with Dion. Um, give him a shout out if you're in any of those areas to be able to support. I know they've been doing a lot with equipment drives. They've donated suits. They've um, done a number of things. Um, consultations to our HBCUs. So thank you, Dion. Um, our research council, Dr. Beal Tafik. Hello, 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 everybody. So glad to be here. Research is all over. So if you want to be involved, right, we believe that you guys are the researchers and it's just our job to help you bring the voice of the work that you do in the field forward. So just some of the upcoming events, as you saw in the ripple effect, we are having our first annual, our first ever, right? Annual um, ripple effect, diversity and aquatics, community collaborative research symposium. And the great thing about it is it will, it will engage and involve two different types of presentations. We'll be having round tables, which are kind of set up, set up like small research discussions where we'll have speakers and tables kind of talking about the great kinds of community collaboratives that might be going on in their area or programs or projects or our councils, for example. We'll be pre having presentations there to just share as well as I'm excited to announce some of our presentations, um, our um, our larger oral presentations will include whales tales, the revision, lifeguarding. Hey, what are we doing? How to become an instructor and pool using art as water base water um, as as a as a method for water safety education. 
We are excited also to bring a mobile rendition of the pool exhibition, which was actually in its full form as an installation here in Philadelphia at the Fairmount Waterworks for um, the pa past two years, where we also have our postcard campaign, where I'm glad to see we actually have over 1,200 responses that we're looking at around what does it feel like to swim with over 14,000 people visiting the exhibit over the two years. So we are excited to be the guardian of such a work. We are also seeking sponsors and fundraising. So if you're interested or know organizations where you would like to actually have the full installation come to your, your state or your program or your county and you'd like to know more information about that, we're looking for sponsors, also for for um for actually becoming a part of the the exhibit as it moves um and and that also is supportive so we are excited um as we this is a living exhibit and we are glad to say that after um in 3 years hopefully the exhibit itself will actually rest here at the African American History Museum here in Philadelphia we've been working really really hard and the Philadelphia um African American History Museum will be relocating to the Benjamin Franklin Parkway and for those of you who might not know it but just seen Rocky you know those steps he's running up that's where we're going to be so diversity in aquatics is making a, a lot of moves and we're looking forward to um, our forthcoming um, next uh, journal. Um, if you've had the opportunity to see some of the research we're going on, guess what guys, it's your voice and your voice that gets out there to really talk about the great work you're doing. And we do our best to try to help shepherd you through. We have a special section which um, the International Journal of Aquatic Research and Education, a collaborative, um, another effort um, led uh, by, by our research council and Dr. Stephen Langendorfer um, to actually have voices from the field. So if you'd like to see that, Thaddeus Gamery was our first inaugural voice from the field talking about the wonderful work of Blue Mindfulness. And guys, you just have to believe. So our council chairs, help we they your your voice your thought what you're doing guys there's a lot going on and diversity in aquatics has had the opportunity to be a part of it so if you haven't also had a chance the national water safety action plan guys it rolled out in the summer if you haven't seen it you should log on to see it because really guys our country it's the first of a kind in our country really talking about as we're saying how, how communities at the region, the state, the community, the state, the regional and local levels can take steps towards bringing water safety awareness and diversity in aquatics was at the table to bring this conversation for to bring this mission as a partner forward. And, and that's an honor. And we are happy to say our members are doing the work in all across the country, globally, guys, globally, as well as, you know, through partnerships. And so when we say the work is, is the work you do, it's the work that we do. And without, you know, that collaboration, partnership, we're making a difference. And when we're talking about water is power is life, right? We are water and diversity in aquatics, truly, as we say, from from cradle to right, one of our 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 uh, our for our past right, or one of our uh, a board emeritus would say, from cradle crib to cradle or cradle to the grave, we're we're involved in this right. But the idea is when we talk about the grave, the grave is a part of the water of life, right? We come from water. Our history is water. To save our earth, water is important. To value the value of aquaculture, the value of scuba, the value of health. Blue mindfulness talks about how water is a healing power. And so thank you. That's what our research council explores through our councils. If you're interested, our councils are looking for members who would like to present as a part of diversity and aquatics ripple effect. So guys, get involved. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Beal, um, for that update, which you went through uh, a couple of things and I put them into the um, chat for you guys to access. 
Uh, next is Swimming Council. This is Coach Candace. And she she was on deck. Sorry, to... I'm, oh, there you go. I'm 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 here. Um, hello everybody. Um, I'm Candace Tucker with the Swimming Council. Um, one of our biggest things. Um, and as we're getting closer, we're going to our um, third annual water international water safety day so um that's our biggest focus right now is getting our partnerships together which we did just partner with um sigma gamma row um and just and usa swimming um to make sure that we are growing our international water safety day um as well as we are currently looking for funding for an initiative at apartment buildings around the city of Houston to um, offer free lifeguard hours as well as um, weekly lessons um, at a few apartments. And that is pretty much it for me. <laughs> no, that's amazing. And I think that uh, concept of doing apartment uh, swim lessons, if you're interested in, in hearing more about that um, and what Candace is doing, uh, I'm sure she will share her email into the chat there. So thank you, Candace. Um, and then last but not least of those who are our councils who are here, um, our wellness council, Ms. Julia Spann, the Thomas Spann Wellness Council. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Sorry I'm not at home right now. I'm kind of in transit. Um, right now, but uh, great to be here. And thanks for this opportunity to share. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So just wanted to uh, mention that uh, we have been doing various activities. And one that I wanted to highlight right now in terms of the wellness council was a um, health forum. We did a health advocacy forum uh, this past week. Uh, mental health was the big focus. And it was held at the Lauder Hill Performing Arts Center. Uh, it's a huge venue. And so we got some exposure there. Uh, and we also brought in the concept of blue mindfulness uh, through our diversity and aquatics uh, um, leaders and members, uh, um, Lieutenant Kenny Rowland, and also uh, one of our swim instructors, Coach Nicole McDermott. Uh, so we went over life-saving techniques. We went over um, blue mindfulness. Um, we did an exercise with the with the attendees, and it was just something new because a lot of times when people think of wellness, they don't bring in the the water element. So I was very gratified that we were able to insert this. And um, one of the things that uh, Thaddeus and I were speaking, thinking, talking about, was the fact that. Um, this needs to be included in more of these health um, seminars because we have them all the time. This is Women's History Month. So we had like women's health and men's health and we're talking all these different topics. But what about the role that water plays in women's health and men's health, you know, and um, even just our mental health. So that is one of the, um, that's one of the things that I realized in doing this is that there are not enough people who are thinking about the water aspect. So definitely, definitely plan to, um, as they often say, big this up more and promote more um, water awareness and um, how it plays such a critical, vital role in our wellness overall, even mental mental health. So oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Julia, for that. And um, and ways that and, and helping to our membership with ways that to be creative and also keeping uh, that as the center point that water is not just uh, learn to swim. It's also part of joy. Right. The book on um, blue mindfulness is a part of it. But Thaddeus, go for it. Yeah, thank you. And uh, Julia and I were talking about water uh, that plays a key role. Or, and can for a lot of people. And here I'm up in Norfolk uh, working with Dr. Sean Anderson at Norfolk State and Coach Dion Dean uh, to, to bring the, the blue mindfulness uh, experience to the adults 
population up here at Norfolk State University. And we have an event coming up. It's co-sponsored by the Norfolk State Police Department. And uh, coincidentally, the chief of police for Norfolk State is also the uh, on the board uh, or president of the Hampton Roads Chiefs of Police Association. And we're doing a, a blue mindfulness workshop starting on April 12th. It's open to all faculty and staff, uh, adults of uh, um, Norfolk State and community, not, not to the students and not to, to children. And we are also gonna start doing First Fridays, uh, water safety and blue mindfulness workshops uh, starting in the fall. And we're going to uh, continue to build an aquatic programming and I'm gonna support uh, Coach uh, Dion Dean and what he's um, doing over there as well in the ways that we can and promote water as wellness and mindfulness. Thank you. And thank you for that, Thaddeus. Uh, I do want, I, I did skip over scuba. I think our scuba chairs are here as well. Um, so Kat, thank you so much, uh, giving a chance for our scuba council and our last council uh, to give their updates. Yeah, no worries. Um, so Anesti couldn't make it tonight. He's with a bunch of students down in the Florida Keys doing scuba scuba stuff, as we do. Um, so they're doing a little bit of a field school during their spring break. Um, and I'm really jealous that I couldn't go along. But I only have a few quick updates. I know it's getting late for some of us here on the East Coast. Um, coming up in a couple of weeks, we have the American Academy of Underwater Sciences, AAUS, Scientific Diving Symposium, so Diving for Science Symposium. I'll be there presenting on behalf of Divers Alert Network, um, and I highly recommend that if you guys are in Pensacola that you drop in um, throughout the whole week from April 13th through April 16th. Um, drop in and see what kind of amazing things they're doing in scientific diving, um, not only just in marine biology, but how diving is affecting human physiology, which is something that I specialize in at Diver Alert Network. Um, so we'll be presenting some of our research there. Uh, obviously, the dive season is from a little bit of like mid-April, early May, all the way until September. Um, I highly recommend if you're not scuba certified and that's something that you're interested, you reach out to myself or Anesti and we'll figure out a way um, to get you guys in the water and under the water. Uh, yeah, I see somebody's asking for my email address, so I will put that in the chat real quick. And um, I'm trying to think anything else that's coming up before our next meeting. And I don't think we have a whole lot. We are looking to build our committee on the scuba council. So if you're a certified diver, um, an instructor even, and you're interested in joining our scuba committee, please reach out. I put my email in there in the chat. Um, and, you know, we'll, Anesti and I will meet with you and see, we're looking to, to have about seven to eight members um, to just sort of build this collaboration and spread across the United States, because Anesti and I both are on the East Coast, and we'd like to sort of spread our wings outward. I do travel, um, but, you know, it would be nice to have people in Texas and California and, you know, Washington State, up north in Michigan, those kinds of places. So, yeah, again, my email is in the chat if you have any questions. Unfortunately, it's getting a little late for me here, and I do have a kid that is past his bedtime, so I won't be able to stay on for the breakout rooms. Um, but thanks for having me, and I will see you guys soon. Awesome. Awesome. With that said, we're going to finish out our meeting with uh, going through breakout groups. So I asked each of our council chairs, just pick a different one. Um, you can connect with them. I know some of them need to leave, but our, for our last 10 minutes of today, uh, we're going to go through breakout groups. You can ask questions to each of the people that raise topics today um, and even connect with each other. If you want to be like, hey, you, me, let's grab room number 10 and let's talk. Let's connect. This is what this is for. This is what our membership meetings provide um for us in this space um i know thaddeus wears multiple hats but uh beverly is available if you want to ask uh questions about grenada so if you don't mind bev getting into a room for that um if you want to find out more information how you can get involved but that's how we're going to finish out today and then we'll come back around 9 35 and which is east coast time 9 35 and being able to um connect and close out for today. So uh, thank you guys for being patient. As you heard, we have a lot of updates, but I'm going to create those breakout rooms right now um, for us to all connect. There's about eight of them. 
um, for us to go to. Mm -hmm. They are open. And I'll be here in the main room if anybody wants to ask questions here. So, Miriam, I have a question. They just show up as numbers. How do we know which one is? Which? Um, you should be able to see who's in each one. So Adrian's in room number five. So that's our adapted council. I, I can give you that, I think. Or can I label them? Will they let me label them here? So Stephanie is in American Red Cross. She is in, um, she is in room. So American Red Cross is in two. Uh, if you want to ask about American Red Cross, uh, if you want to join, uh, Beverly and, uh, Adrian adapted aquatics, as well as Grenada, that's room five. And that's all that's taken so far. So room two and room five, American Red Cross is in room two. And then room five is, uh, the Grenada. Oh, so I should join something and then people can... I'm not sure if I should join something separate by myself or should I hop in? Um, why don't you take room three? Okay, I'll take the So again, room two is the American Red Cross. Um, room three is Thaddeus. Um, and room five is uh, Grenada with Adrian and Adapted Aquatics. Hey, Dr. Lynch, it's Lenise, how are you? Hi, Lenise, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'm glad that you were able to join us here today. Yeah, I just, I wanted to see what the, you know, dive in a little deeper um, to see what you guys are all about um hopefully get more involved um as time allows so um so I'm glad I saw the invite so that I could attend um I wanted to ask you so you may not know but I'm not a swimmer I'm not a water person I mean I could swim to save my life but I I don't <laughs> I don't swim um but uh, so for trials, if I wanted to volunteer, what other opportunities would there be for me to do? Yeah, so actually we are looking, there's all different types of stations of volunteers. Not You don't have to be in the water to volunteer. Okay. We also are looking for um, kind of like our managers. Uh, either you can work tables like registration, um, setup, closing, but also we're looking for groups that would be our water watchers on the deck. So um, being able to be support. So like if uh, somebody needs to get out or uh, if they need uh, changing stations. So there's plenty of opportunities outside the water. If you want to get involved with that outside, um, okay, you can do that too. Okay, that's fair. And then my other question would be, because that's something, you know, Sanat, she could get in the water, mm -hmm. um, but she doesn't, she's not like, a, like she swims, but she's not a, you know, perfectionist on her strokes per se. You know what I mean? Like yeah. she can do it. She can show someone, but it may not be the hundred percent perfect way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but as a kid learning how to swim, like she can teach a kid how to swim, but it's not like maybe what you would do as a like competitive swimmer mm -hmm. and that's so, okay 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 because uh -huh. she loves kids so um and then could I so does she need to be a member of diversity in aquatics so um to volunteer for this event, you don't have to be a member of Diversity in Aquatics. Just to kind of give you, um, we'll have aquatic professionals, WSIs, and lifeguards that will be in Got the it. water with kids. We always okay. like to have extra helpers, right, um, that will be there to support the station. So if Sana wants to get in there, there will also be a lifeguard there that okay. is helping out. Um, so she would be like a like an assistant and a guide uh, for that station. Um, Got it. And Yes. Go I'm ahead. sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you no. <laughs> no, it's fine. You go ahead. Um, two, I wanted to show you on the membership site uh, through events, you can see there's different. Um, so it has the volunteers as well as um, it has the information uh, 
if if Sana wants to display her book, uh, also being a uh to be a vendor as well, um, to have that okay. because we'll have tables set up for um a couple of our um groups that are being involved if they're doing water safety classes or more. So that I looked and that was on the sixteenth. So on the, it's just on the one day, right? Uh, it should be the 15th, 16th, but I, I can make that update. I'll make that update on the website. Okay, so it's for yeah. both days. Mm -hmm. Okay, but she, so if she does that, she can't, like, volunteer doing something else. Yeah. Because it's that all happening the at the thing. same time. Okay, so with that being said, then could I just, would I just, like, buy tickets on the website for the for the trials so what it would be i uh, if you buy tickets it would be tickets for the 16th on for trials um we are getting a package deal so diversity and aquatics uh where you don't have to buy the ticket for the 15th but are you going both days we are going both days i'm trying to find sorry uh, my brain's shutting off. Uh, so the 15th will be in the evening and then the 16th will be in the morning um, for Olympic trials. So we'll have those two tickets. So I'm sorry, it will be the 17th on that you would have to buy your individual tickets. I just don't want to take space where other people could take space. You know what I mean? Um, with that being said, like volunteering is different than being a vendor. Yeah. And so she can't do both. Um, okay, so I'll figure it out. But um, if so what we, if you would like to buy tickets, that would all go through the, the portal um, to purchase. We don't, we, uh, we're not uh, purchasing tickets because the way the package comes together um, from USA Swimming is just a package that will go to us. Um, for those two days. Got it. Does that make sense? Does that help to answer it? It does. Okay. And then I see volunteers have to be 15. Yeah, we would, we want 15 um, year olds. Okay. How old is Sana? Well, Sana's 15. I was, She's my 15. younger daughter is, um, she'll actually be 13 that week. Mm -hmm. um, so I was thinking she'd be a little young but I'm not gonna leave her behind um yeah. bring her on um bring her and, and she's with you and she's helping on the dry land base that is perfectly yeah. fine. so I could sign her up as a volunteer yeah and we'll we'll station um I think there's a place where you can put um in the comments once you sign up mm -hmm. if there's not just send me an email so that way I'll send it to our coordinator so as she's creating the volunteer list she'll have that in mind Okay, so I'll wait till you update the website with the vendors for the first day. Mm -hmm. And then maybe I'll sign up. Um, maybe we'll do two volunteers one day and the vendor. So someone's helping Sana, and then the next day, the volunteer and the vendor as well. Like two and two. You see what I'm saying? Um, because I don't want Sana to be alone. And um, oh, yeah. so, yeah. And then then she could at least see the trials with either myself or my husband. Because the other one doesn't, she won't care. She'd be fine sitting in the hotel. So, okay. So glad I got that um, clarified. And then, oh, I wanted to tell you excitingly, uh, I got an email from Mr. Mashad. I think that's how you pronounce his name. He's the president of USA Diving. Yeah that's awesome isn't that cool that's very so, cool i'm meeting with him on next monday the 8th so about going to trials so we'll see I'll keep that is amazing. it is very amazing so but thank you so much i am it's past my bedtime too <laughs> so, <laughs> I get you. Yes. so thank you so much and um i will keep a lookout for the website to be updated and i'll go from there Awesome. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Dr. Lynch. Have a good one. Have a good one. Hey, Miriam. Bye -bye. Miriam. Yes. Hi, Ernie. This, this is, this is, I'm sorry. I had to transition to the car. So 
what is is Stephanie in a breakout room? I'm not gonna be able to do it now anyway. She's but in I room want, two. I'm gonna. I'm. I can't get in room two because I am driving, and I'm not gonna. Oh, no, no. Try to do anything different. I'm just driving and talking. Okay. Um, but yes, I will. If you could pass a note on to Stephanie that I'm gonna just send her an email and try to make contact with her tomorrow. Okay. Is that okay? Yes, I will let her know. Um, I can also put you in the breakout room to see if that. Oh, you can. Out. If you can, that'll work fine. Thank you. Thank. Yes. Yeah, we had to co I went to the pool to be with Mark while we were doing this. So we wouldn't we'd be on the same page when we were talking. Yeah, but we just clo we just closed the pool because I had a dive class there, and oh, the practice yeah. was practice was going on. Gotcha, gotcha, but, gotcha. Yeah, and I wanted if you can put me in there. I, hopefully, I can. I, actually, what I'm I'm gonna bring them all, everybody back in about one minute. So if you hang on okay. here, then you can um, ask her once I close out. Um, okay. Everything. So I'm gonna all right. close out the rooms and. One more minute. I know they're asking. I really appreciate your patience and understanding while the old guy navigates himself through all of these technological challenges. Hey, no, you're good. You're good. Um, we're glad to, I mean, most of all, I'm just glad to get this information to you all because this is a, a great opportunity to get involved in really um, everybody's certifications up and running. So I right. mean, shoot, more people are certified. That's amazing. And, you know, we've got, since I'm back in the school system, working with the aquatic, aquatic program, those, some of the instructors I'm trying to get into this WSIT Academy, but time, timing is kind of off for them. But that's going to, it's going to be an amazing opportunity because they've done so well in D.C., um, working with an affiliate, Ellis, to get these these high schoolers certified and get them ready for the for the summer here in DC and some of the outlying you know DC Prince George's uh, Montgomery to get them out and to show them that 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 is a career possibility. Yes, absolutely, and that's what I think. That's the biggest part is making sure that kids see it as that a pathway to a lot of different EMS doctor like it yeah. goes. Oh, yeah. So a whole bunch of things. Well, I'm Ernie, yeah. I'm gonna bring everybody yeah. back. Be safe okay. while you're driving, though. Don't be safe. Oh, I will. I'll just be listening up if I can get a couple of questions in there. Y'all's discussions look good. There were there were a lot of people in a couple of those rooms. I love it. I love it. I, I know there's probably still more information you want to get from everybody, but I do want to be mindful of time. Um, and it is late into the evening for us on the East Coast. Um, it's bedtime, y'all. So with that said, um, I'm gonna close out tonight, but I just want to say a huge thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to our presenters, um, each of our program managers, my aquatic councils, you guys rock. I could not thank you enough, and my board as well. So thank you guys all for the support. Thank Thank you all as members for being involved with us and believing us and keep on continuing to spread that word. Have a good night, everybody. If you have questions, contact us. Be safe all.